Welcome to Fantasy Grounds Quick. It's time to make a map. Let's first find an image that we can use for our combat map. After a quick search, I found an image I want to use for my map. Let's go ahead and download it. Typically, when looking at maps for VTTs, it's best to find a map that doesn't have any grids or hexes on it. This is because Fantasy Grounds has a built-in grid layer that you can use to add to any image. But in this case, I've selected a map that has a grid to show you how to align the Fantasy Grounds grid with the grid on the image. Once we have our image downloaded, let's get back into Fantasy Grounds. Under the Library folder, let's open our Assets. Assets contain everything from images to creature tokens to player portraits and more. Since we have our own map we want to use, we need to import it into the Assets folder. To do this, click on the Folder button. This will take you to your Fantasy Grounds game folder. Let's go ahead and open up the Images folder. Simply drag your image that you've downloaded into the Images folder. Let's refresh the Assets folder, and then now we can search for our image. Let's go ahead and select the Images folder option, and then click Data. Once we have the preview of the image we want to make the map with, press the Create Map Record button. This will add a new entry to your images. Under the Campaign folder, select Images. Open the image by clicking on the record link icon to the left of the name. To adjust the size of the window, you can left click and drag, and then in the bottom right, grab onto the corner edge and extend it. To zoom in on your map, you can use the scroll wheel. Let's go ahead and rotate this map 90 degrees. To do this, let's click first on the Layers tab. As you can see, we currently only have one layer, which is this map. We're going to select this layer and then rotate clockwise. Perfect. Now that we have this map in the orientation that we like, we can go ahead and lock this layer so that we don't accidentally move it around in the future. You can do this by going to the right of the selected layer and clicking the lock icon. Now we are unable to move the map around or rotate it further. The next step is we need to add a grid. To add a grid, go ahead and click on the grid button at the top right. Let's zoom into a corner of the map where we can clearly see one of the squares. And then what we're going to do is select the Set Grid with Mouse button. This allows us to click and drag the size of the grid to get a rough estimate. As you can see, the further that we get away from that point, the more mismatched the grid becomes. But this is an easy fix. Go back to where you originally set the grid and then start panning over. As you can see, our grid's a little bit too small. So let's go ahead and adjust the size of the grid by going to the width and height and increasing it by a pixel size. Now you might have to realign the grid and the easiest way to do this is by going to the adjust position section and using the arrows to nudge the grid over. Now let's take a look and see if that's better. It's a little bit better. Let's go ahead and add about a half a pixel. That's pretty darn close. I'm happy with that. And that's it. Now you're ready to use your map. You can go ahead and grab your players and drag them onto the map. As well as any enemies for the encounter. To add an enemy to a map, first you need to add it to your combat tracker. You can open the combat tracker by going to the Tools folder, 
and then finding the cross swords icon that says combat tracker. Let's go ahead and drag a red dragon onto the combat tracker. Then from the combat tracker, we can drag this dragon onto the map. Of course, if you want to add extra detail to your maps, you can go and create fog of war effects and walls for your map that block line of sight. To add walls that block line of sight, we'll first need to add a wall layer. We can do this by going to the bottom right and adding wall layer. Once we have our wall layer selected, we can go to the wall tab, select wall, and then select line to start drawing. To add a door, we can select the rectangle shape and then change the terrain type to door. Let's go ahead and add a big door right here. Now in our map options, let's turn on enable disable line of sight. Now when we drag our heroes onto the map and we click on our heroes, you notice that the map goes dark. We can see this more clearly by going under the toggle toolbar and selecting the player vision preview mode to see exactly what our players are seeing. We can also add dynamic lighting by enabling lighting, then selecting the lighting tab. Here, we can add a new light. Let's add a torch. Click on the map where you wanna add the lighting. You can also give your characters lighting by going under tools and selecting the effects button then dragging any of the lights onto the player token. Finally, let's add a little secret to this dungeon. Let's make this wall right here a secret passageway. To do this, let's go back to our wall layer and select our wall tool. Let's select line and then for our type, hit illusionary wall. Then we can just draw a line across Return to our play tab. And now it's blocked from their vision. But if they go through it, there's no collision. In addition to line of sight and lighting effects, we can also create custom map effects. Let's do this by adding an FX layer. Then going to the FX tab. Let's add a new effect. and you can see that there are clouds now on this map. A great way to use effects is also by using the time of day effect. Here, we can precisely control what the color temperature and time of the setting is. Another effect that we can use to great extent is the water effect. Water is excellent to use for river, streams, and ponds, but it's also great for campfires. Let's go ahead and make a mask for this layer. Underneath the effects tab, let's click enable mask. Then we're going to click and drag the area that we want to have the effect. And now we have a lovely flaming pit. It also works great on torches. That's a general overview of the map making process. There are a ton more layer effects and edits that you can do, but for now, this is just the basics and it's good enough to impress your players.